Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is the next in a series looking at the construction of an extension. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up for this video as it really does help us and improves our ratings with the YouTube algorithm. Today's video, we're going to look at the construction of the external walls. So we'll start off here with showing you some engineering bricks. So these are pretty boring, straight red bricks. Very uniform, very much the same in construction, but really important when you're dealing with the groundworks. So you can see here that we're laying the engineering bricks first, and we'll do a course of around five high. And these bricks are specially designed. They're much stronger than a standard house brick, and they also have much lower water absorption. So it means that they're really good at dealing with environments where there is frost and water attack. So basically, in this lower area, which is going to be the, the bottom of the house before the damp proof course, we're going to lay engineering bricks and you'll never see these bricks. So these bricks are basically going to be underneath ground level. So um, it doesn't really matter that aesthetically they look a bit boring and they don't match the rest of the house because they, all built, they will be invisible uh, as they'll be under the ground. So what we can see here is the guys are just making up some mortar and they're laying the bricks. We've, we've plotted this all out. You can see here the lintel, so the grey part across the hole that the guy's filling in. If you've looked at our previous video, you'll know that this pipe was laid for rodding access. So this channel we can see here was dug out to enable us to rod the sewer that runs underneath the old extension. So we're filling that in. But if you look to the right here, you can see the grey concrete bar is called a lintel. And that basically is bridging over this gap. So if we have a quick look over on the left hand side here, we can see that the damp proof course level has now been completed. So we've got five courses of engineering bricks. So that means it's basically five bricks high. And that's where we'll then put in the damp proof membrane later. So we're only laying these engineering bricks five bricks high. And on top of the five bricks, we will then put the damp proof membrane. Now here we can see the lintel in a bit more detail. So we're not filling in the channel that has the rotting access in it because we want to leave that with loose material so that if in the future we need to go in and access that, it'll be easier to dig it out. So we're not putting solid concrete on top of that building the troll and let us. So the lintel bridge is essentially bridging over that soft area of ground. And then we'll lay the engineering bricks on top of that lintel to give it extra strength. So it basically spreads the load of the weight of the property to either side of the area where we've got the rodding channel. So that's basically how you bridge over any soft area or door frame or anything like that when you're doing brick construction. You have to have a lintel which spreads the load to the remaining area over the gap that you've created. So just moving forward, here we are looking at it, the house from the, the actual rear itself. You can see on the right hand side here, we've got two layers of bricks. So we've got the furthest away one is the external wall and then flipping the video over, we're looking at the external wall here, which is the closest to us. Then we will put some insulation in the gap and then the second layer of bricks is the internal wall. So this will all be below ground level. So if you look at the house, you can see the doorway is much higher. So this is basically round about the finished floor level. So all of this will be underground. We'll have a patio that will come out from the property itself. So these bricks will not be visible, these engineering bricks. But basically, now that they're in place, we will now put a damp proof membrane all the way across the top of these bricks. And that basically will stop water and frost and damage from rising up and permeating into the property itself. So it's pretty standard stuff. Got five courses of bricks, then we'll put the damp proof membrane and then we will have uh, the actual bricks that you will see, the visible bricks for the house itself. Moving on a little bit, we have started to construct the external walls. So you can see this one is partly constructed and we're using the bricks that match the original house bricks themselves. Now these are more expensive, but it's a requirement of planning and building control that you have bricks that match the look of the original house, so that's fine. They do look slightly different when you look at the bricks versus the ones on the right, but that's really an age thing. They tend to mature over time. You can see on the right-hand side the old wall 
is a bit browner, a bit greener. Uh, that's just an age thing and a bit of erosion. But here is the damp proof membrane. So you can see the black section on the external wall. And that damp proof membrane has been laid all the way around the top of the external engineering brick. So we've laid that before we've started applying the bricks on top. So you can see it runs. If you look closely, you can see that black line runs all the way across to each corner. And you can see here clearly the difference in the bricks. The bottom ones, the very red engineering bricks, and then the more expensive bricks above that do match the original house. You can look back, it does look slightly different at the moment, but we won't see that because that external wall is all being demolished anyway with the windows and the door in it. But the key thing here is to have the damp proof membrane in because that prevents rising damp and stops damp coming up through into the property itself from the ground. So those engineering bricks repel water, they're very strong and have uh, very low water absorption. And the idea is really just to keep water at that lower level and not allow it to penetrate through into the house itself. So really important that that damp proof membrane gets put in when you're building a wall of this nature to stop any future problems because really difficult to put it in afterwards once you've finished the project. And here we are a little later on and you can now start to see the extension taking shape. So the wall on the right hand side has now been built up to the level that we're looking for to put the lintel across the top because we're having bifold doors here. So in the same way as we talked about the lintel earlier bridging across the gap where the rodding access is, we've got a big gap here. So this big section that we haven't built into is going to be the bifold doors and we're going to have to put a lintel from one side to the other to make sure that the roof has enough support. So the left hand side, we're going to have to build this up further to match the height on the side we just looked at. But you can see internally here, we're starting to remove the old patio. So the difference in the floor height is quite significant. So you can see where the engineering bricks are. That's basically underground. So it's pretty much on the level with that patio. That patio are digging out now, and then that will all be below the, the actual finished floor level. We can see the construction of this wall itself single skin on this side so it's a nice layered pattern we've finished it off really nicely the work's been done quite well down the side tricky to access so what's been happening here the guys have had to lean over as they've been building it and brush off and finish the mortar from the top rather than being able to get down the side because it's a bit narrow and a bit tight to actually go down there and now that that's done we can see the rodding access here there'll be a, a small manhole cover over that once we've finished the damp proof membrane still visible here because we haven't put the bifold doors in and now we just need to carry on building up the wall to the right here so internally you can see we've had to have a lift so we had to put in a small bit of scaffold with an area to stand on when we're building that wall up and we'll be doing the same on this side shortly so we'll move that scaffold over so the guys can access the top section of the wall and build it up. You can see the patio that we've started taking out. So it now looks like it's quite a deep cavity here. This was previously all of the patio and then we had the foundations all around the patio which we've laid the bricks on. But jumping forward now, this is now completed. So these external walls have all been put to their final height. So you can see we've got a slight lowering of the sections on the inside where the bifold doors will be and that's where the lintel is going to come straight across and sit on top of that so we're going to put that lintel in before we finish everything finally but you can look up here we've got a sort of slightly staggered step down and that's because we're going to fit the lintel and then brick in on top of that lintel so we will fix it into place once it's done here's some blocks now so we'll be doing the internal walls in blocks so um, it's cheaper and it will be plastered out. So you don't need to put expensive bricks on the inside because the internal walls will never be seen. They will be built, then they will be plastered over and painted and you'll, you won't know what they're constructed from. You have no idea once the plasterboard is on there. So block work is cheaper to buy and cheaper to lay. So it makes absolute sense to put that on the internal wall. Absolutely standard construction for any project. So. That's basically the walls finished for the external side of things. We'll now have to come and do the insulation and build the blockwork for 
the internal versions of the walls. You can see that we've removed all of the old patio now. So we've got an area that's really low down. So we're going to have to construct a floating floor for to make it the same level as the existing house. That's all to be done shortly. So that's basically everything covered off in this video from the external wall perspective. Just jumping inside the house, the last video we showed the drainage system, which has now been signed off by building control. We had a few questions from a few viewers asking whether or not we have to put P shingle on that. You can see here that we do. So we're just filling the initial piece of it with P shingle. And the reason for that is to make sure that those, if those pipes move or there's any sort of movement in the ground, then these pipes can have a little bit of flexibility. So you put P shingle on there and then we'll build on top of that. So you can see now, once the P shingle went in to a certain level, we then backfilled all of the hole with the material that we dug out. So if you've seen the previous video, you'll know in this room previously, we had a huge mountain of mud. You can still see some marks on the wall here. There was a huge mountain of everything that we'd taken out of the hole. And we kept that deliberately because we want to put it back in so that it's loose fill. So this will be underneath the floorboards eventually. We're putting some underfloor heating in, but it will be underneath the floor level. So we can leave this loose fill. We don't have to backfill it with solid concrete. And this is it just a little further on. And this is completely finished now. So we'll pick this up later. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we will see you on the next video.